Hi, today we're going to, going to be starting out with mesh analysis. But before we start with that, first we have to know the Kirchhoff's voltage law. In other words, KVL. Now the Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all the voltages is zero. Now there is this circuit here. Let's look at how to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law here. Now, since it's sum of all the voltages, you have to keep in mind, you have to always sum up all the voltages and then equate it to zero. So in this case, it would be, since this is minus and this is plus, try to like uh, look at the signs, okay? Like try to see what sign the uh, voltage source and the uh, resistors have. Since the current is going in this direction, all the resistors will have plus here and minus here, plus here, minus here, plus, plus here and sorry, minus here. This is plus and this is minus. All right, so when we're, when a current is going inside a resistor, this one will be plus, the, the, the entering part will be plus and the leaving part will be minus. All right, so for this, the equation would be minus V1 plus, uh, let's, let me just take care of that. All right, minus V1 plus I R1 plus V2 plus I R2 plus I R3 equals zero. All right, so this will be the total equation. Now notice that we wrote I R1, I R2 and I R3. It's because V equals I R and since we have to write it in terms of voltages, so we have to convert the current that's flowing through here, I, the old, the current that's flowing through is I, I into R1, the resistor, the resistance here, R1, and then again, plus V2, since this is plus, this is minus, so plus V2 plus IR2 plus IR3 equals zero. So this is how you would apply Kirchhoff's voltage, uh, voltage law. Now let's look at how, let's look at the mesh analysis finally. Mesh analysis, totally is dependent upon KVL. So that's why we had to review this first. We learned it in grade nine, right? I mean, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. I mean, this is just for jogging up your memory again. All right, so let's move on with Kirchhoff's uh, voltage, I mean, mesh analysis. Now, mesh analysis has this circuit like this. The, in Kirchhoff's voltage law, it was just one loop uh, circuit, but the, here, here there are like multiple loops, one, two, three, four. So that time we need uh, a mesh, uh, we need the, this technique is used only when there are more than one loops. And then uh, while we, so we're trying to find the I, uh, the current of these within, that's flowing through within these loops. All right, the first thing we have to do is we have to write equations for all these four loops. Uh, let's write the equation for loop one. For loop one, the equation. So the equation would be, since the current is going through here, like I said, this will be plus, this will be minus, plus, minus. Uh, again, like just continuing it, just for showing, I mean, just for uh, clearing out the, uh, what you call, doubt about this. Let's, let's do that. 1 into I1. So I1, this is I1. The current that's flowing in this loop is I1. So I1 into 1 plus, now look at this. This resistor is shared by this loop and this loop. So that's why the current here is I4 and the, the current here is I1. So since we're computing the current in this loop, so we just have to write uh, 1 into I1 minus I2, uh, sorry, I4, because these two loops are sharing this resistance. And since we are computing for loop 1, that's why I1 is first. We have to subtract I4 from I1 since we're computing for loop one. If it was for this loop, loop four, then it would be I4 minus I1. All right, and all right, so then we have plus one into I1 minus I2, because this loop, this resistance is shared by this loop and this loop. So I1 and I2 current shares this one resistor. And since we're computing for loop one, that's why it's I1 minus I2. All right, and then that's it. So that's it for loop one. So this is the equation for loop one. Now let's simplify it. I1 plus I1 minus I4 plus one plus I1 minus I2 equals zero. So the final 
equation would be 3i1 minus i2 minus i4 equals minus 1. So this is equation 1. Now let's do it for loop for loop uh, 2. For loop 2, the same thing that we would do. Current is moving from entering here and leaving here, entering here and leaving here, entering here, leaving here. So it would be 1 into i2 minus i1. Since this time we're coming for loop 2, then minus 1 volt plus 1 into i2 minus i4 plus 1 into i2 minus i3 plus 1 volt equals 0. So after simplifying this equation, what the finally we get is i1 plus 3i2 minus i4 equals minus 1. Now, you might be wondering why I'm writing i1, i2, i4, i1, i2, i4, I mean, in a serial by way. That's because... For applying the Kramer's rule, when we're trying, to, when we're gonna find, when we're gonna find uh, the currents for each loop, that time we would write, we would. It's easier to write it down in, a, you know, serial format and uh, writing it down chronologically and stuff, because it will be easier to calculate later on. So that's why if you write three i two minus i one minus i four, just to make it look better, because minus in the beginning looks weird to you. Well, it will be a hassle when you're going to write. It will be confusing when you're going to be writing the Kramer's rule uh, determinant, finding out the, uh, what you call the current, applying um, the Kramer's rule. That's why it's better if you write it down like this, like in a serial format, I1, I2, I3, I4, like uh, chronologically. All right, so let's move on to loop three. Let's erase this part. All right, for loop three, for loop three, what we have is, now look, for loop three, we have, well, let's start writing the equation, minus one volt plus one into I3 minus I2, I3 minus I2, and then we have minus one milliampere, uh, minus one milliampere. We can't use this loop. We can't actually compute this loop. We can't actually compute anything for loop 3 because we already know the current for I3 and that is minus 1 ampere, minus 1 milliampere. So that's why for this one, for this case, we don't need to compute anything for loop 3 because we, what, do we, what, what are we trying to find really for mesh analysis? We're trying to find the current, right? The current in each loop. Now the current in loop 3 is already found. I mean, it's 1 milliampere, minus 1 milliampere if you're going to count in clockwise direction since we already already by the way uh, the mesh analysis is mostly done in the clockwise direction that's why it's always computed this way and that's why we're going to take i3 as minus one milliampere in the clockwise direction so anyway like i was saying for loop three we don't need to compute anything because it's already found out i3 is already found out which is minus one milliampere all right now let's go for loop four for loop four uh, let's compute it in this way uh, the clockwise direction. So what we have is <clears throat> we have minus 1 volt plus 1 into I2 minus I4 plus 1 into I4 minus I1 equals 0. So after simplifying it we get minus I1 minus I2 plus 2 I4 equals 1. All right, so this is the equation number three. So now what we have to do, if we wanted to find out the current in each loop, I1, I2, and I4, I3 is already found out, we just have to apply the Kramer's rule. And using that formula, using the determinant in the numerator, we put, some, we put a matrix in the numerator and then matrix in the denominator and then finding out for it. Well, you, we, I will link the below the Kramer's rule video, which I've already done before this video. And the final answer is, I, I1, the final answer is minus 0 0.5 milliampere. And for I2, it is minus 0 0.5 milliampere again. And for I, I4 equals 0 milliampere.
So that was the final answer. Uh, if you want to check, uh, try to do this maths on your own. Try to solve it with the Kramer's rule trick technique and then solve it and then check if the answer matches this one that I've given below. I mean, this one, I1, I2, and I4. So, uh, well, th this was all about mesh analysis. Next, we're going to move, we're going to be moving on to uh, super mesh analysis, uh, which is a bit harder, of course, because it's super mesh. Anyway, so that was all that was all about mesh analysis here and I hope you understood the tutorial and please like and subscribe if you want more tutorials like this. I'll be doing mostly on DC circuits because AC circuits is, um, well, it will take a long time to do AC circuits. So that's why for now, DC circuits. Anyway, so uh, please feel free to, you know, watch more tutorials. I have an algorithm playlist if you are a CS major, that is. So uh, yeah, good luck.